Okay, Fight Freaks, welcome to another podcast on the TitleFight.com. This is your boy, Big Steve G, and we're going to start off with recapping this past weekend's bouts. And we're going to start with the HBO doubleheader from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. In the cold feature, rising heavyweight contender Seth Mitchell took on fellow hard-hitting Chaz Witherspoon. Now, this fight produced great fireworks and only four rounds of action. There was action on both ends, and both fighters did have their moments. In the end, Mitchell would score a fourth-round TKO. Fights like these are what the heavyweight boxing is all about. Mitchell, along with Tony Thompson and Brian Jennings, are making much-needed noise in a very dull American heavyweight landscape, and hopefully good things are in the future. Uh, In the main event, 47-year-old Bernard Hopkins, the current claim to the light heavyweight throne, took on former light heavyweight champion and kingpin Chad Dawson in a rematch of the disappointing fight last October in Staples Center when the fight was brought to a disappointing halt when Dawson picked up Hopkins, threw him to the canvas, which caused Hopkins to suffer a shoulder injury. First ruled a TKO for Dawson and was later changed to a no contest, mandating an immediate rematch. Now, this was a very dope fight, which produced minimal action and a lot of clinching and holding. Hopkins controlled the early rounds with his rough inside fighting and was making Dawson fight his fight. However, Dawson was able to weather the storm and began dictating the pace by keeping the fight in the center of the ring and using crisp boxing. In the end, Dawson would earn a 12-round majority decision. Hopkins clearly thought he was the winner and even refused to give a post-fight interview. Dawson was clearly the winner, and I'm a little disappointed with the way Hopkins acted after the decision. Uh, this is a man who's done a lot of good for the sport of boxing, and he should have showed more class in defeat. George Foreman, the predecessor to the oldest champion in boxing history, at least went out with a lot of class in, in defeat in a fight he clearly won against Shannon Briggs in 1997. Foreman was robbed by the judges and gave one of the most classiest and heartfelt interviews I've ever seen. Hopkins owes it to his fans and public to give them a proper farewell, as he has clearly done. It's obviously an end to an era, and we, the boxing public, have to look to boxing's future without Bernard Hopkins. Happy trails, champ. You had one hell of a run. Chad Dawson's future does look bright, as there is a handful of good fights out there for him, possibly a rematch with John Pascal, or a mega fight with current super middleweight champion Lucien Boutte could be in the future. We'll have to wait and see. The highlight of the weekend was generated by Pauly the Magic Man Malinaji, who once again resurrected his career as he went to the trenches once again and captured a welterweight title by defeating champion Vyacheslav Sinchenko in Sinchenko's backyard of Ukraine. The Magic Man controlled the fight with his speed and quick combinations and earned a 12-round unanimous decision. Malinowski didn't want to take this fight at first as he felt it was too much risk and not enough reward, and it turned out to be a great decision. Way to go, champ. You still have a lot of boxing left in you. Now, this weekend is the big one. Mayweather versus Cotto. HBO has put a lot of effort in promoting this fight with the 24-7 series, as well as a 30-minute special, Floyd Mayweather speaking out. If you haven't seen any of these episodes, you really need to as it's great stuff and Floyd Mayweather and the money team always bring the entertainment. These pre-fight specials are a great way to whet your appetite for the upcoming mega event. Well, that about does it for this session, Fight Freaks. This is your boy Big Steve G. Have yourself a good one.